I remember having a conversation, this same conversation with um, one of the presidential candidates of former, formerly from YPP and then APC, that's Garba, um, Adamu Garba. And then he said that the not Young to run is just is some kind of fluke according to him so now would you actually say that the youth have been represented or have they i'm trying to find the right word have they been represented or compensated what is the right word here the two are in function now so the youth have been compensated yes all that happened during NSAS. of course the person that the champions of NSAS, one of them is now a minister bosun hmm was there were the people pioneers of answers today he's a minister so so according to him now let me let's speak from his mouth i will allow you to speak from his mouth as his mouthpiece so now he would say come back to tell those youth that fought during that protest 20th october 20, um, 2022 uh, 2020 rather that don't worry we have all been compensated because now i'm the minister of so course if he has been compensated and he's a uh, uh let me said his ministry is a ministry that engaged that carried the youth along we are moving from analog to digital now you understand and this his ministry is trying to come out with innovations President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the 16th president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, he once said, serve Nigerians and not your region or state. I'm sure he's referring to the new ministers and not only the new ministers, every head of parastatal and every Nigerian. And also remember that proverb that we all grew up with that says the youth are the future leaders of tomorrow. But then what exactly is playing out today as we speak? My guest on the show today is Musa Moman Katangora, who is the moderator of um, Aso Villa News. And today we will be speaking of how um, the youth um, uh, inclusion in political party and if they should wait or move. Like they say, um, the youth are the future leaders of tomorrow. So should they take the power? or patiently wait. My guests will definitely speak to us on this matter. This is The Conversation and I will be your host. Welcome. Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is D Conversation. We are reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. Now we'll go straight to our conversation or our chat for today. And my guest is Musa Kotangora. He is the moderator of Aso Villa News. Great to have you on the show today, sir. Great to have you also. Thank you. Okay, so now let's talk about, we'll, we'll talk about State of the Nation. We'll talk about a lot of things that are happening. But tell us what is... Um, what is the news or what is the latest or the update happening, especially in Aso Villa at the moment? Because Nigerians will tell you that if you are staying in Aso Villa, it means that you are just cut out from the rest of the world. Like you are just separate from every other individual outside um, the Aso Villa. So it is, it, it is Aso Villa against Nigeria. Would you accept, uh, mm -hmm. would you agree to that? And what exactly is the update happening in your field? around you well the update happening first of all is uh being i the moderator of aso villa news is not only uh making emphasis on the activities of the villa alone mm. our own focus is to what to bring out uh all the activities of this government to the general public okay we don't uh criticize the government the only thing is where we see the government are wrong, we say it quickly. If you tell the government when they are wrong? Yes, of Despite course. Despite the fact that you are working for the government? Of course, you have to. Oh, okay. You have to. Because this is a government of the people. Mm. You understand? It's not a government of a certain individual. This is a government of everybody. And uh, especially in this government, we believe everybody is carried along. Okay. Yes, so... So, so that um, principle of um, he who pays the piper... Uh, plays the pipe around that take the tune does it work for your organization it of course it works oh so it means that um if um you're working for for instance you're working for president bola Ahmed Tinubu, it means he dictates what should be news in as of uh, villa news of course no oh 
Okay. Why? Because uh, you see, there are a lot of controversies and there are a lot of propagandas around. So we try as much as possible to bring out the genuine ones. You get? Especially we have the media, the essay to the president on media and publicity. Oh. Every day we have the clear fact of all the activity happening in the presidency. And we, it is our duty to bring it out to the general public, to let the general public at every day, there's a number of activities carried on in the presidential villa for the benefit of Nigeria for, and for the development of the nation. Mm. So that means you only carry news, does it mean they actually carry news that concerns the presidential villa or the president or his administration or Nigeria generally? Uh, in general, we are carrying the, the, the activities of the renewed hope. Okay, now, now you've accepted the fact that uh, he who plays the part of the tale, so that no, means no, no, no. it is renewed when, hope. When, when we mean, news you're carrying. When we mean renewed hope, this is the administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, whether an APC governor or PDP governor or Labour Party governor, they are under the administration of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Therefore, in quotes, they are under the administration of renewed hope. Interesting. <laughs> so if, if they have a, a separate mantra from renewed hope, say, say for instance, SDP presidential candidate, the former one, came mm. out to say that, um, I, I mean, the one that um, contested during the election said, his is not renewed hope, it is hope again. So are you saying that because he's now under the administration of renewed hope, he has to sink with a renewed hope and leave his hope again? If he has, if of course, if he's not... Uh, answerable to the renewed hope as far as this is this administration of Bola Metinu, which is a renewed hope because all what we're after is to see that Nigeria gets to where it's supposed to be especially the youth are given the mantle of leadership a lot of youth are carried and they are engaged in this government so this is a renewed hope you understand mm -hmm. a lot of youth that have no hope their hope have been renewed you understand this government is trying to bring people from the grassroots. You understand? There is a place for them at the politics, at the political ground. There's a place for the, there's a place for them that they can come and participate. You get? We have a vibrant youth minister. She has kickstart with the activities. You see a lot of activities coming out from her, her ministry. So this is also the part of the renewed hope. In the history of Nigeria, this is the first. For we to see a minister of youth, a youth. Formerly, we have ministers of youth that are AG, 50, 60, you understand? But now we have a really representation in this government. Mm. So we are for everybody. So if you say you are for everybody, but then you say that now in um, time immemorial, we've always had a minister of youth who is not a youth. Yes. So then it means that formal administration you were still in um as the moderator were you still the moderator of um aso villa news of course no you were not I was but i am um, aso villa news has always been there in of the course, formal administration of course i was the founder of it okay you were the founder of the news okay so if you say that you work for everyone and then you tell the government um you uh, make them realize that what they're doing is wrong or what they're doing is right you put them right in their feet so what how have you been able to tell previous administrations that your minister of youth is not a youth of course the essence of coming out to this uh perspective of the aso villa news is because the past government to my own understanding we have bridge of communication with the government. The citizens are not allowed to speak. They are not allowed to make a lot of amendment and corrections. But in this government, someone has been appointed as a board chairman of FEMA. You understand? But because of there is an, there is a, there is an opportunity that the citizens are communicating with the president. They, they, they voice out their grievances their own reasons why they thought that that individual does not qualify to be the chairman of that board. You understand? Quickly, the president looked into it, review into it, you understand, and made an adjustment. That is to tell you that the president is a listening president. You understand? And we are trying to let the citizens know that. In every government which president is a listening president the current one the current one so how would you um justify that statement with if you have to compare 
uh, formal administration. We've heard some people say that um, the formal administration, when you when um, things are happening um, the other way, he's looking the other way. But now you're saying that this administration listens. So would you actually say the same thing for president, uh, former president Muhammad Buhari? I won't because I was not opportune to be engaged into the government. You understand? There is a barrier between the youth, most especially with the past government, which is different in this government. His speech yesterday was, he is born to make mistake, but he is ready to adjust anywhere he has made mistake. You understand? For a leader that is leading the country, Nigeria, to accept if he has made a mistake, he is ready to adjust. I think Nigerians should have a clarification that we are in the right track. The only thing we are to do is let us pray and wait for the best and also hope for the best you get this is not the past government that it is just like undemocratic government you because the citizens are not allowed look at what happened to a lot of correspondent also like uh, the, the one yesterday that happened a correspondent is having the boldness to to criticize or say anything against the government which in the past government it is not so you understand but let us understand that if you are given the freedom of speech let it be limited that this is a leader that is leading a country you get let us not abuse that right that the president is a president that has that have a listening ear let us do and undo you get but believe you me president bola matinibu is the president that listens to the, to, the, to the advice of his people, to the grievances of Nigerians. Well, isn't it too early in the day or in the administration to actually judge the fact that this uh, administration listens? We just celebrated 100 days of the administration. Isn't it too early in the day to actually judge yeah, with regards to press freedom? It's not, it's not too early. There's an Hausa Adis that says, if the Friday will be good, hmm? you observe it let me say the signs of it will be since from wednesday a good friday the signs will be since from wednesday this government has agreed to come in unity and harmony in order to bring the development to nigeria you get the time of appointment a lot of people that have been given appointment now we have a lot of technocrats that have not even participated in bringing in the president. You get? But because in time of leadership, you have to bring in people with capacity, people that will be able to deliver in different category. You get? This is not the, 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 the type of past government that when appointment, it is only due to the political party that brought you to power. In the time of President Bola Matinibu, it is different. Are you accusing formal um, administration I am not, I'm of not, nepotism? I'm not accusing, but I'm, I'm trying to say this is what that, that is what happened in the past government. You get? That is what happened. But this government, you have seen a lot of changes. Not because I'm given opportunity to, 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 to be in the government or because I'm mingling with the government, but this is the reality of what is happening in the government. A lot of people that have been appointed are appointed based on their capacity. It's not based on religion sentiment. It's not based on ethnicity. You understand? It's not based on what uh, uh, the, their interaction with the president. A lot of these people that are appointed, the president don't even know they are well about. All he's after is being them cap having that capacity to deliver. Mm. Okay. Um, Okay, so I, I, I would um, I'll ask my producer to actually play um, the conversation I had with um, a politician this morning with regards to nepotism. If he if he thinks that um, that accusation of nepotism in formal administrations, if we are seeing it happening now, because you have most people who come out to tell you that uh, even according to him. He said that uh, most of um, the administrations, um, um, the people in the revenue sector, you have uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu decided to take some of uh, the his men. He's supposed not to pick almost all his uh, economic uh, team from the West. But if you look at Minister of Finance now, he's from the West, Southwest. 
Minister uh, uh, FIRS, Federal Land Revenue Service boss, is not West. Uh, CBN, Central Bank of Nigeria, from Northwest. I can say all the revenue generating agencies in this country, Northwest. But what, what, what's your point? My point is that the, the appointment is going one sided. Uh, Jumping it in one, in one only ethnic is not good for democracy. So we're back to democratism again. That's just it. And according to him, he said that it is wrong because it means we are now tilting back to that um, era of the formal administration where we accused them of being nepotistic. Don't you agree? <laughs> well, you know, to me, they are political hypocrites. That is how I take them. Why? Because in this government, you see a lot of people. In every state, we have ministers being represented. There are states that even have two ministers in the history of, let me say, the North Central. It is an opportunity for the North Central to have uh, a large number of ministers. It is being given in this uh, administration. And a lot of also positions that have been given, it is being given to what? To, to, to people based on their capacity, not based on ethnicity. People see it at that point of view when they have a sentiment or they have, they just want the government to be spoiled. They want to tarnish the image of the government. Is that what it is? It is. That's how it is. But if you are going sincerely to the development of Nigeria, is we have ministers being represented from each and every state. And in the constitution of Nigeria, there is no law that says the, 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 the president must pick his chief of staff from a particular region or from a particular state. The chief of staff, this is a person that the president have agreed. He has trusted in him to assist him into carrying out his activities. This is not a, 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 an office that is being mandated that the president must took a person from a, a particular state or from a particular region. You understand? This government is trying to bring out all the parastatals, all the agencies, back to function. You get? The president, the former president, he spent eight years. But believe you me, there are a lot of parastatals that have not even uh, have their own uh, head of the parastatals. But in this administration, it is different. You get? Every day you see, you notice that there's a new appointment. And in that appointment, a lot of people from different uh, states, from different regions are carried along. If just 100 days and you can observe a lot of changes in government. It means that we should judge what four, four years would look like. Of course. If within that 100 days, you can see a lot of engagement of people from every angle. President Bola Metinibu is trying to give the youth hope to me. The renewed hope is not a political slogan. This is a slogan for the youth of Nigeria. You understand that this is the time for the youth. The former president have amended, have bring it to law, not too young to run. Hmm. But this president have really implemented the, 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 that as not too young to run, as it is a mandatory uh, thing that it has to be carried out. You understand me? We have youths that are as members of the federal executive council four to five of them youth you understand but formally they took youth as this youth are just an umbrella or youth are just used in order to get to government at the end of the day they closed their door for the youth but in this government a lot of youth are carried along a lot of youth are engaged and more are still coming uh. All right, so because you talked about um, a lot of youth have been carried along in this government. Now, I would ask you a question. If you remember, during the NSARS protest, most of the um, argument or most of the demands made by these youth, uh, apart from NSARS, they wanted to um, end um, uh, this discrepancy between the 
older generations and the um, younger generations. They want more political inclusion. They want, want more inclusion in administration and all. And this has been a long time coming. And now you talked about that not too young to run. And then some people will tell you that what has happened with not too young to run. I remember having a conversation, this same conversation with um, one of the presidential candidates of former, formerly from YPP and then APC. That's Garba, um, Adamu Garba. And then he said that the not too young to run is just is some kind of fluke according to him so now would you actually say that the youth have been represented or have they i'm trying to find the right word have they been represented or compensated what is the right word here the two are in function now so the youth have been compensated yes all that happened during NSAS. of course the person that the champions of NSAS, one of them is now a minister bosun mm was they were the people pioneers of answers today he's a minister so so according to him now let me let's speak from his mouth i will allow you to speak from his mouth as his mouthpiece so now he would say come back to tell those youth that fought during that protest 20th october 20, um, 2022 uh, 2020 rather that don't worry we have all been compensated because now i'm the minister of course what you're if saying? he has been compensated and he's a uh, uh let me said his ministry is a ministry that engaged that carried the youth along we are moving from analog to digital now you understand and this his ministry is trying to come out with innovations into the designing of website engineering you understand the boosting of uh, of the economic side into uh, the internet you understand so he has been given opportunity in order to what to participate fully if he's a champion of answers now he has been given a minister if the mistake is made not carrying that a lot of youth along in Nigeria, which means the president have did along, but thank God he is a minister that uh, that that is trying to do the right thing. I think day before yesterday he is in Cross River. He met the governor, trying to tell the governor that there is a lot of engagement coming up, that he wants the youth, the Nigerian youth, and especially the youth of the Cross River to be carried along. You understand? I'm trying to tell you now there is four to five ministries now that we engage the youth. Formerly, it is only the Ministry of Youth and Sport that engages the youth. But now, four to five ministries are being mandated by the president to engage the youth into their activities. And not only ministries are just there to look after the affairs of the ministry. They are there to, what, to create innovations, to create means of livelihood. Nigeria should not rely on white collar job and, and, and we shouldn't rely on white collar job. If you see these advanced countries in the world, they rely on different way of bringing development to their countries. I believe the administration of Bola Ahmed Tinibu, having Bosum as a minister, having uh, uh, Jamila Bayo as a minister, having Dr. Beta Edu as a minister, these are youth. These are champions of democracy. These are people that have gone to the battlefield of the politic of the political era these are these are youths that have engaged that have engaged with the grassroots you understand these are youths that know the pains of those in the rural area i believe there will be a change mm. okay and, and that change we should not expect that change to happen immediately because this is just the beginning of the government we should expect the change at least give six to seven months for we to see the signal we have signed we have started seeing the signs of the change you just like you said that um, a good friday is noticed from a wednesday yes we have started seeing the signal so the signs now are about to come out and i believe those youth ministers are not going to betray we the youth mm. because we are learning from them okay so before we go on the, that on the break i will actually do for a break but before we go I would ask you, I will bring back that question. Finally, Musa Kotangura, have the youth been fully represented and compensated? Of course. The youth are fully represented and compensated. If a person like me that is from a rural area, you understand? Not what is a rural? What, what's your definition of a rural area? A rural area is a person that is coming out from a local government, a typical local government. You understand? Having an opportunity to come to the political environment, 
not the state, but the federal. You understand? That shows that there is a sign of sincerity in this. Not only myself, there are a lot of youths that are also. Jamila was once an SSA to the governor, an SDG. You get, she was given that opportunity to come and present the youth as a minister of youth. You understand? As one of the decision makers of this country to tell you that the opportunity is being given to the youth. What I want to tell the youth is patience, respect, and tolerance. To me, these are the three most important things in politics. You can't gain anything politically if you are, if you are, not, if you are not the type that respect. You understand? So, if, so you're saying respect, tolerance brought you to this position that you are in? Of course. It might not brought me. The three must, might not. But one of it must has been what brought me to this. You get? If you are not respectful, politics is an institution. If you, don't, if you are not patient to learn, you are just there to get those common uh, money and go. You will get the money. They'll forget about you. Oh, so really, there's, there's money in politics. If, are you agreeing to it? Of, of course. If you work, if you work, what you expect is what? You suffer before pleasure. And there is no suffering without pleasure. But there is no pleasure with pleasure. You can enjoy and at the end of the day, expect enjoyment. So, that, so you can eat your cake and have it? Yes, of course. So I believe politics as an institution of learning. We are taking, we are trying to get it right. Formally, we just, because to mingle with those politicians, trying to hijack the mantle of leadership from them by fire, by force. You understand? But now, we should mingle with them. We should be with them. We should learn from them. They are bringing us into the field. And the time we come, they have no option than to let us be. And this is the time. They have given us the opportunity to let us be. Okay. So now I will take you by your word and I will return it as a question to you. If you remember that um, we all grew up, in fact, even the days of my great-grandmother, they will always tell them that in their own time, that they were told that they are the future leaders of tomorrow. And we still hear that um, phrase, even up until tomorrow. My my uh, last niece will tell you that my, my teacher told us that we are the future leaders of tomorrow. So, at that point, that is what most Nigerian youth were always run, that mantra, they always kept running with. But I hear you say that um, we cannot take it um, by force from the older generations you have to mingle so if they are the future leaders of tomorrow it means calm down just mingle and then it will fall on your feet or should you just take it by force what exactly is the right way you can't take it by force you understand anybody today that you see become a governor become a senator he has suffered in different ways if he has not suffered so definitely there must be a way that has been arranged for him somebody have more has must have been suffered for him before him coming there what i believe the youth should be patient being patient does not mean you should not participate but like like i said in in the days of my great grandmother they were told that they are the future leaders of tomorrow so yes. how patient is patient if up until now the older generation are still sitting in power of course we have we have 30 percent of the younger generation in this government you get we have 20 to 30 percent of young legislative presently in the gov in the legislative we have younger governors as governors we have younger ministers we have younger special advisors so what are we trying to see we are the future generation we are the future or let me said uh, the youth are the future of tomorrow right so i believe this is the time we have been given that opportunity. Of course, we are given that opportunity. And this is the time. It is not like how, uh, how our older one sees it, that it is still those same people that are still ruling. If we are patient enough, if this AG wants, this is the last time the AG wants we rule. This, what, what do you mean by the last time? The range of this, it's to at least 12 years. 
you get so are you saying that this uh, this uh, current president will stay there in the next eight years and then you have another older generation of course the next no what i'm trying to tell you is if we have, if we are given this opportunity to participate in this government you get the beginning of this government you have four to five younger ministers after another administration definitely there will, there will be more increasing you get those that are not having the opportunity will have another step of development to come up to another level the ministers that are now present ministers believe you me they have they have to they, they will have their PAs a lot for example the minister of humanitarian formerly she was an essay to the governor uh. if she's not having that belief of what we are the future of tomorrow huh, will, will she be where she is today all right from the essay to the governor to a commissioner to a woman leader to now a minister you get all right so definitely the future is bright this is the time for the youth it is youth o'clock when i hear some people tell you that we've been hearing that for like since time immemorial let, but let, let's go this on is the a new hope let's let, let's go on the break um musa katagura uh, she clearly shows that there's so much to unbundle from this conversation with musa katangura moderator of aso villa news and we will definitely pluck out the next word from his mouth i'll see you after this time out join us again this is not the era of our forefathers that they use their food no one is, is asking anybody to that use is, their food though. that is how that is how a lot of nigerians are seeing it because a governor bought a land cruiser is not a topic of the day what we want is action Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is The Conversation. We are reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital of Buja. If you just joined us, you've actually missed out on a whole lot in the first 25 minutes. But then you can still join in the conversation. So my guest on the show today is Musa Kotangora, who is the moderator of Aso Villa News. Okay, before we went on that break, you've actually stated quite a number of things. And then the last um, statement you made is, it is you to clock. But then, like I asked before, I, I remember even putting uh, my social media status and then people keep saying, oh, please, we've been hearing that since, since for, like, forever. So, uh, in fact, they even got their, their um, morale. I heard someone just, that then just came to tell me that, um, you know, in the military, they'll tell you morale high. <laughs> but this one says, ah, with, with that one, please, morale don't low. So how would you actually speak to those kind of people, especially people who are not, who do not believe in the renewed hope agenda? You have people who are um, amongst the obedient, then they tell you they don't believe in that mantra. How would you speak to them and tell them that it is you to clock, but then it, they should have to? Be patient because the older generation, like you said, might have to stay in the next eight or twelve years. Of course, uh, first to me, every day what I understand and what I observe is, for example, a colleague of mine is appointed as an SA or maybe a commissioner, and maybe I'm more brilliant than him, or I participated fully than him. The mere sense of it is fingers are not equal, and sometimes our youth's lack of patience destroyed the future and destiny of many of our youth. You get? Today, somebody that is not up to maybe hardworking than you might be appointed even to be a minister. Mm. You might go around saying, this is somebody that didn't even work as I work, look at. But you don't know the plans that your own is on the way coming. But out of the, those, those grievances that you used, what your predecessor will see is that if you are not patient to wait for your time, definitely if you are given an appointment, you will do more than how you are expected to, to do. So in the sense, is it's all about loyalty. You get? It's of two things. You can't believe in God and you don't, you don't worship God. <laughs> there is no way about it. There is, no, there is nothing of such. If you believe in God, definitely you have to worship God. If you believe in your future, definitely you have to wait for your time. 
And in waiting for the time, there are steps and processes one need to follow to wait for his time. You get participating into the activities, being loyal. You get those are the steps someone should follow. What I want to tell the obedient, these are, to me, a uh, political party is just an umbrella that will bring you to power. Today I'm in APC does not mean I will continue to be in APC. Tomorrow I may decide to leave the party to go to another party. If So you're among those who do not believe in ideology. You just keep moving from one party, party to another. Political party is formally is Tinibu in, in APC. Is in APC. But then if you have to look at, I hate to use the word advanced countries, if you have to look at other um, countries where um, if someone tells you I am a Democrat, no matter what happens, they stay as a Democrat. That is, uh, that Same is thing with the, the no, Republicans those, or the Labour Party. If those are in the advanced countries, not a country like, we talk of Africans, let's come back to the root. You get? Let's come back to the root. Political party is an umbrella that brings you to power. So don't intimidate those that, in other, that are in other political party. Let them, convince them to understand that what you are having is genuine than their own. That is all, but not to criticize. What tomorrow they came back to the party, to APC, how are we going to look at them? You get? So are you justifying that it is okay to keep um, cross-carpeting, shifting from I one party to I am not trying to, to say it is okay, but what I'm trying to say, I'm talking to of to our own younger generation, maybe the, ob the, the obedient, the others in the other party, you understand? I want to let them to understand that. Let us keep the grievances aside. Now we have one president. The only president is President Bola Ahmad Tinibu. Now let us come down as Nigerians to find a way of making Nigeria to move forward. You must not be appointed in the government before you make the country move forward. We have a lot of writers that write articles every day. And those articles you write, they go viral. They teach a lot. They teach people a lot of things. This cell phone you are seeing, to me, it is also an institution. You get, you communicate, or you drop an article, a lot of people see it, a lot of people think, use it to, 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 get, uh, to get a lot of ideas. And also a lot of people will condemn you with it. You get? So to me, the youth should understand that we need to be united, not divided. That is why in every constitution of every political party, there is no religion differences. There is no ethnic group differences. We are all one. So now it is over. This is not the campaign era. This is the time for the renewed hope in quotes and renewed hope is not only for APC it is for every Nigerian you might look at it as a renewed hope of me let me use this opportunity to go to school and acquire knowledge you might look it as let me the renewed hope as let me have a means of livelihood mm. you so, might look, so it depends on the fence where you're yes, sitting or standing you might look at it as the insecurity we are facing let me be an advocate of what? Of peace. An advocate of what? Unity. You can look at your new hope from different angle. But... In what angle are you? Me, I'm looking at it see. as... This is a time of change. The greater change. The change that the unborn Nigerian will come and benefit and reap the great of this country. Understand we are going to go back to what? To the source of where we started, Nigeria started from agriculture. Before we invented, we come out with the, 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 the origin, the coming out of crude oil. Let us go back to agriculture because we have to eat. We have to wear clothes. You understand? We have forgotten the means of farming, cotton. We have forgotten the means of cash crop. We are only depending on crude oil. President Bola Metinibu is trying to bring back the economy of what? Of agriculture. You get? We have the modern means of agriculture that we don't have to tip the soil with our hands. Oh. So it's for us to understand that everybody has a place to participate in this government. Okay. Whether I've been appointed, whether I'm not appointed, whatever you do, do it sincerely. 
there is a time for the world. Okay. So, uh, how does the fact that we need to go back to agriculture? I hear you talk about agriculture. The, we talked about the days that we were in the in days of our peasant uh, farming and all, but now we are looking at uh, modernized um, technology in agriculture, agri tech and all. So, how would you? Because most people will remind you that some of these things that they use, FX, actually affect them. So, how would you then t talk to such people, telling them that? The naira that is the dollar to the naira that is over one thousand at the moment, but yet you still need to go back to agriculture, go back to modern technology. How is is that going to relate to um, the dwindling economy, especially with regards to FX inflows? Well, you brought the issue of dollar. This present government is trying to find a way to bring out the value of naira. Understand, this government only came. This is just four to five months. In office you understand this government met this uh, this controversies of dollar that they have to what to sit down and find a way out to get Nigeria out of this mess we can not just rush into actions without finding a solution if we rush into actions at the end of the day is what we have no achievement but it's a gradual process. We have the new government, the leadership of the central bank now. You understand? Very soon there will be a new policy that will come out. If this new policy came out, it will bring an opportunity for what? For the value of Naira to come up. So are you saying that some of the policies that they've reeled out before now were just trial and error? Some of the of policies course. such as um, harmonizing the Naira, policies such as um, um, fuel subsidy is gone, S policies such as um, the NNPC boss few months ago or weeks ago went to get um, the um, loan from Afrexim Bank just to cushion the effect of the Naira. Are you saying those were just trial and error? Of course, in every government, they have their own ways of tackling issues. They have their own methodology of tackling issues. This government is not trying to tackle the issue without the ideas of the general public. The general public matters a lot. These are the people that are being ruled, not only to, what, to, to, to bring out that the rules that you must abide by this rule, whether you like it or not. President Bola Metinibu is not that type of leader. He's trying to understand the pains of Nigerians. The first, uh, the, the first subsidy removal let me say it is a gone out issue now. Nigeria will no more pay subsidy. But Nigeria, the president is trying to bring out the ways now. If we are no longer paying subsidy, those huge amount of money that we usually use to pay subsidy, let us use it in another means in order to what? To make impact in the lives of Nigerians. You get? And if you rush into giving out those money without bringing out methods and ways that those money will be used at the end of the day it will just go for waste are you talking about the palliative the palliative we have to look into it very well not only the palliative in the sector of economics economic sector in the sector of education in the sector of health in the sector of what every sector will benefit from the money that is being used to pay this first subsidy now there's no more first subsidy. It has to impact in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the aspect of education, in health, in infrastructural development. In health, there should be an improvement of world, of all the materials in hospitals, the, the kind of mortality, mortalities, the kind of death range of children should reduce. You understand? In terms of education, there are a lot of youths that want to really go to school. And every Nigerian that is bold enough have, at least we are in the modern world, they will have a bank account. You understand? So, the, this government is trying to bring out the way of let this huge amount of money that will be taken out not being for only few members or for only, let me say, for only few people that has access to the government alone. It is going to touch the life of everybody so indirectly are you referring to yourself people that who are um have access to the government so it's not for you people it's not it for, is for all of us it's for everybody it's for everybody 
even the unborn generation. It is for everybody. Because if you have a good education now, it has been passed uh, by the legislative that Nigerians should benefit from the, the payment of Waek, Niko, and Jam. You understand? If we can have a starting point of the government should pay for Waek and Jam, we are heading to somewhere. You understand? How possible do you see that happening? Formerly, our forefathers, our elders, our, our leaders benefit from education freely without their penny, without their kubu. If we really want to benefit well, we have to bring it back. You understand? We have to understand that the first priority to be a reliable country that has uh, have an international recognition in the world, let me say the first of is, is education. Let us, let our youth be educated. And in this form of education, to me, the government should try and bring out that, 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 let me say, the cost of entrepreneurship should be mandatory. You get? Mm. Let us not rely on white collar job. When you are coming up, maybe your plan was not to be a journalist. Is that not? Sometimes it happens. But along the line, what? You understand that you will drive pleasure from what you are doing now. And what you are doing now is not the end of the road for you. If you have the ambition, you might move from scratch. You understand? You might get to the higher level. Tomorrow you might be in the journalist field. You might go to further education. You might be in the economic sector. You might be in every sector. Okay. The belief is what? Have your plan. Prepare the plan and be ready to execute the plan. Okay, so speaking about plan, I recall uh, President Bola Metinubu during his inaugural speech where he said, um, um, I think it was about 10 million Nigerians will be lifted out of um, um, poverty, uh, poverty, unemployment through the digital economy. So what is the plan in that regard? You see, the, the, the plan is the expert we speak on uh, those huge amount of money that is being used to pay the first subsidy. The first subsidy is, not more, is no more now. The money will be used by those various ministries in order to what to create jobs opportunity for the youth. We're in the modern days now that you can you can make your trades online. You understand? You can make a, even education now with the aspect of insecurity. There are a lot of method of learning now online. You don't have to go to school. You understand? Mm. Before I mean, you, you don't learn. have to go to the building. You don't have to go to the building before you line. A lot of people now graduate from their master's doctorate degree online. So the government should try and train the youths, not only going to the internet with, uh, with, uh, with, without the method, without the, the in, being informed of the good side of the internet, the bad side of the internet. They should be taught on what this is a place where you can gain a lot of money if really you are there to do what is right. You understand? If it is in the issue of shoemaking, the government should bring out equipment that we can make quality shoes. We have heights and skin in Nigeria. Uh. You understand? So instead of us to be exporting it, government should bring those equipment down to Nigeria. So that means it still returns back to the government because we, you, most people will talk about industries. We do not even have the industries. I recall the last uh, conversation I had with the guest and then he said, where is the Arewa um, industry? Where a textile industry? Where of, is... In this, in this modern and days now. We are returning back to the government. In these again. modern days now, the shoes you are wearing, are you sure they have been brought from industry? Are you sure? If today... The government creates workshops for the younger generation to learn. At the end of the day, they graduated. It means I can stay in, stay in my house and make shoes. Yes, of course. A lot of them. These mm. shoes we are wearing, a lot of them are being made by the local 
uh, manufacturers. You understand? And they, they even last longer than the shoes we, br we bring abroad. You see a lot of innovations. You see a lot of youth creating things that you never believe they can be created in Nigeria. So the government should understand that the word of Japa is no more dear. Is it? Of course. Really? Of course. Because now I hear you say that uh, we can make shoes from your, from your small corner. And then uh, some people will tell you that the government will always tell us to cut our cost. But then they don't like to cut their cost. If I finish making my shoe in my house, in that my small corner, mm -hmm. and then make it as good as what you can buy um, in Italy or in Paris, and I come to sell it to that government official, that same government official who decided to go and purchase a Land Cruiser outside instead of buying it in Nigeria, uh, what are your thoughts what on that? I want Isn't you that to contradictory? Understand. What I want you to understand, the aspect of what a lot of Nigerians are looking at, it, the aspect of the XUV or the Land Cruiser should not be even brought in the aspect of what we are trying to see. Today, you have been elected as a governor. Whether you like it or not, you, have, you need those vehicles for your security reasons. You need those vehicles to travel to wherever you are going to to work for your constituency. We are, in the, we are in the advanced world. This is not the era of our forefathers that they used their food. No one is asking anybody to that use is, their food. That is, how, that is how a lot of Nigerians are seeing it. Because a governor bought a land cruiser is not a topic of the day. What we want is action. We don't care what they use their salary for. We don't care what the kind of cars they are having. What we care is what are we being able to impact what is the achievement that is being derived after a year, after two years, after three years, after the end of the government, but not their cars? Everybody can buy a car. Everybody. Even a local farmer that farms in the, in the rural area can purchase a car that a governor can ride. If he's given the right um, he must not. He must not be given a right. If, if that entrepreneur that you talked about, yes. who is into um, uh, business, entrepreneurship, is given ease of doing his business. There are a lot of local farmers now that farms and cultivate what to even export to outside countries. Are you telling them not to buy those type of cars? Those cars are not made for governors or for ministers. They are made for everybody that can afford them. But, you, but you've actually deviate, uh, deviated from my question. My question is, mm -hmm. if I make that shoe yes. and sell it to you that this prefers to buy your SUV from, order it from abroad instead of bringing, it, bringing the FX back to Nigeria, would you buy my shoe or prefer to go back to Paris or Italy to you buy see, the shoe? You see, for instance, in the Ministry of Youth, the ministry is trying to come up with a training scheme and also an exhibition scheme at the end of that training bring out what you are able to produce the top government functionary the visitors tourism you understand they will come you come and you come and patronize those your things to them you understand me those things that you made will will we we a lot of people will buy it from you from there you create joy in what you have done it will give you the more sense of belonging to do more mm. you understand the clothes we make today many of them are made in nigeria but at the end of the day the label will just be there as what made in italy because we believe nigerians believe in that ideology that it is only when i buy something from italy that <laughs> i am of high standard but the reality of it is a lot of these things are made in nigeria and this government is trying to what by the by the by the by the by the help of trade and investment by the by the by the assistance of what uh, ministry of communication by the assistance of ministry of youth labor and labor dry trying to what nigerians should understand that we have a source of what we can rely on. All right. As Nigerians, mm. we are Nigerians. We are not Ghanaians. You understand? A lot of these cars you are talking about, innocent motor vehicles, a lot of ministries are using, using them. Military use a lot of 
the cars that are being produced by innocent motors. We can we can we can move fast. And the way Nigeria is, we have to move gradually. Mm. By a All step. right. All right. So because our time is fast spent. If the federal government can mandate every ministry to buy vehicles from innocent motors today, as innocent motors is the manufacturers of cars in Nigeria, it will. It but do they even manufacture? They assemble. Of course, they, they manufacture also. They manufacture. Because if it is assembled, the cars will not be seen. It will be assembled in Nigeria, not made in Nigeria. But those cars are made in Nigeria. Mm. Okay, our time is fast spent, Musa Kutanga. We have to let you go. But then before we go, I'm, I'm going to ask you two questions, and I'd like you to take them in just two minutes. Now, first question is... Um, this morning, the pay, um, headlines was um, read, or some of the headlines stated that um, President Muhammad Buhari gives um, um, assures confidence uh, of his chief of staff. That's um, um, but President I mean, Bola I, I yes. beg your pardon, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, uh, gave the assurance that his um, chief of staff, that's um, Femi Bajabiamila, that he is giving and uh, he's giving him his vote of confidence, saying that he has integrity, and then stated that um, ministers should not engage in campaign of calumny. And then I, I kept wondering. What exactly, or who exactly is he pointing that finger to? I'm going to bring that, new, that um, question to you. You're going to answer that one. And then also, now that the Supreme Court verdict is over, can we just move to governance? Because we have so many people who still feel aggrieved, who still say they are taking their um, evidences to the to INEC. I saw um, the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, saying that he's taking the credentials to INEC and they still um, made a statement saying that um, it is Nigeria. No, he was, he's not the loser. So does he mean that Nigerians are the loser? So can we just move to governance right now and then leave politics? Okay. If you believe God is the giver of power, and God didn't give you the power. What you have to do is to be patient and work with the one that God give the power. Are you referring to I'm those referring, who are I'm, I'm, I'm referring to those that are aggrieved. The era of what campaign is over. I believe apart from appointing ministers, special advisors, there is a way for them as elder statesmen to write to the president that they want to see the president. The president will allow them to come and advise him. You understand? I, be, I respect them because those, these are politicians. But the reality of it is, I am begging them, they should not poison the minds of their followers. We are trying to get it right. It is enough, enough is enough. Let us focus on the achievement of Nigeria, not on it, I think it is over. All and right. I understand that even the president believes in the judiciary because what? He allowed the judiciary to do their own part. Mm. And now it is over. All right. All right. So that the other question, who exactly is President Bola Metimunubu referring to when he says the ministers should not engage in campaign? He's not, he's not referring to only the ministers. He refer, he's referring to everybody. Everybody who? Anybody that thought maybe uh, he can maneuver to bring the replacement of the chief of staff are people trying to replace the chief of staff of course if there is no if there is no such thought how will the president such said uh, such thing okay. definitely there must be <laughs> something of that but right. why i believe it in the in, even in the constitution your chief of staff is a person that you trust mm. that will assist you all right so definitely People should please keep all those uh, propagandas and let us focus on the main aspect of it is a renewed hope. All this right. administration is all about renewed hope. You might define the renewed hope in, in any perspective, but the renewed hope is renewed hope. All right. Thank you so much, Musa Kutangura. It's been a pleasure having this talk with you. Thank you for, for coming. Thank you. All right, viewers, that's where we end this conversation. We have been chatting with Musa Katangara, who is the uh, moderator of Aso Villa News. And it's been a wonderful time here on The Conversation. Just like he said already, let us move to governance and put hands together to make our country, Nigeria, great again. My name is Annabel Oji. God bless you and yours. God bless Nigeria.